welcome back to Crafting and Crime Daily. This is the show where I, your host, Rebecca, Crafting Journey, recap live trials so you have something to listen to while you're crafting. Someone commented yesterday that they enjoyed listening to my game night while they craft. That's kind of awesome. I was playing Portal Nights. It's an older game, but super fun. Yeah, that's something I do on Sunday nights, just, you know, for, sh for grins. Yeah, I don't even monetize it. I just I just do it for fun. Anyway, a lot to get to today. First and foremost, uh, Danilo Cavacante. If you haven't heard that name in the last 13 days, then I you must have been on vacation <laughs> on an island somewhere. This is a guy that has been running around all over Pennsylvania, the prisoner that escaped by shimmying up a wall literally he put his hands on one side of this uh wall on one wall his feet on the other wall and he crawls upward like what And the guard in the tower doesn't see him. So they don't know he's gone for two hours. Then they finally figure out, hey, where's this guy? He's gone. Now they're searching for the last 13 days of this guy. Every time they think they've got him in a perimeter, he gets out of the perimeter. Finally, he breaks into this guy's garage, steals a sawed-off shotgun, you know, assault style weapon and ammunition <laughs> and he gets and the guy catches him in the middle of this robbery shoots at him seven times and misses every time not a very good shot anyway still on the run so here's what he was finally captured this morning a little bit after 7 a.m my time 8 a.m on the east coast here's what went down things started happening last night uh, when they had a burglar alarm go off in this neighborhood so they responded to the burglar alarm no sign of cavacante but they bring in a helicopter with these heat sensor technology and they find a heat source and they're trying to get to where this heat source is you know in this perimeter that and they're surrounding him again this is like the third or fourth perimeter that they think they've had him in but what happens is instead of apprehending him they're not able to apprehend him because a storm came in storm comes in thunder lightning the aircraft has to leave the area so they maintain that perimeter they bring in SWAT after the storm leaves early this morning they go in they bring in the aircraft again they find the heat source they approach Cavacante by surprise. Apparently he was surprised that he had been surrounded. They release a police dog on him because he's not going willingly. He's trying to flee. He's actually, when he finds out that he's surrounded, he starts crawling through some underbrush with his automatic weapon that he stole. So they release the dog. The dog goes after him. He has some minor bite wounds. If you see the picture of him after he's in custody, you'll see blood on him. That's what that's from. The dog bit him, but not, you know, just a little bite. Well, who cares, right? This guy murdered somebody. He had, he was just days from, uh, after he had been sentenced to life in prison. So this was his reaction to shimmy up a wall and escape. He's in custody. No shots were fired. No one was injured except for the dog bite. And he was treated for that on the scene and he has been taken into custody. Thank God, because those people, the people that live in that area were held hostage for 13 days. Couldn't go to school, couldn't go to leave their homes. You know, there's there's this guy sneaking through their garage. Yeah. But I'm gonna talk about an officer who was not so lucky. I'm gonna talk about Officer Jason Rayner from the Daytona Beach Police Department. There is a trial going on that I want to update you on regarding Officer Jason Rayner. Super, super sad. He was shot in the line of duty. And this is the trial of the man who allegedly fired that shot. 
it was a 30 seconds uh, that changed the lives of many, many people. So I'm going to tell you all about that. And the trial that we've been waiting for, the woman that killed her wife and is on trial for the fourth time, they finally finished picking a jury. The opening statements were this morning. I'm going to bring you that tomorrow. I'll bring you all up to speed about what that's about. But I want to catch you up on this trial that is going on in Orlando. Now, this happened in Daytona Beach, Florida, but because of the um, media coverage, of, I mean, this was a huge, huge, big deal when this happened. Um, Jason Rayner was on duty June 23rd, 2021. He was a patrol officer. Um, he's on duty. They had, the police had just put out a B on the lookout, a Bolo for this particular vehicle, Honda CRV. The vehicle was in this complex, apartment complex, and it was backed into the parking space. And there's a guy sitting in the vehicle. Now, he couldn't see the license plate because it was backed into the space. So he approaches the car. The guy the black male that is in the car, and I, yes, Jason Rayner was a white police officer. The black male that's in the car gets out of the car. And this is when the video starts. I want to play that clip for you here. Now, the video stops before the shooting occurs because it's very graphic. So, and no, I didn't want to see it. I don't know if you want to see it, but here's, here's what happened. How's it going? Do you live here? What's going on? Sit there? down. Sit, 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 what, sit. What, sit, 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 sit. Can you sit down? I'll talk to you. Okay. No, come sit. on now. Sit. Come on now. Sit. Don't do this. Just sit down. Why are you asking me do sit I down. live here? Do you live what, here? Yes or no? What's going on though? Who? Charlie 777. No, back up. Stop. 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 Stop, man. Obviously, we stopped showing what happened after that. The video shows Rayner approaching Wallace as he sat in a car. Officers say Wallace got out of the vehicle and shoved Officer Rayner, leading to a struggle. That's when Wallace is accused of shooting Officer Rayner in the head and running off. That set off a three-day-long manhunt before Wallace was finally tracked down to a treehouse in Georgia, arrested. You see them there in cuffs. So it's right after this that you know, after the struggle ensues that... Ortho Wallace pulls out a gun. Ortho Wallace is 26 years old. Is he 26 or 29? 20, Ortho Wallace. I think he was 29 years old. Jason Rayner was only 26 years old. He had only been on this police force for two years. Fresh out of the academy, this guy. So he... He's there. He's by himself when he gets shot. So the sergeant for this precinct tries to get him on the radio, and he's not answering the radio. I mean, he does indicate that he's going out with out with this vehicle, but he doesn't say where he is. And so they try to find him. And they have this particular software the sergeants do. It is called, hold on, uh, Force Watch. It's a program where he can locate any of the vehicles that he is, you know, are under his command, which is kind of cool. Never thought of that. No more Dunkin' Donuts, guys. So anyway, um, they, he's able to pinpoint where Officer Rayner vehicle is so they descend on this location and they find out that he has been shot in the head he was shot um, in the forehead he eventually loses his left eye and he is in halifax hospital which by the way was where my brother was born not carl the other one uh, i have two brothers <laughs> my second brother was born at halifax hospital in daytona beach i grew up in florida so He's in this Halifax hospital for two months, 55 days, during which they're trying to figure out, is he going to live? Is he going to die? He's improving. He's not improving. He, uh, they, they hired a plastic surgeon to take some of the bullet fragment out of his um, face. 
they plan they had planned for some reconstruction of uh, an artificial eye but he does pass away when he passes away the police have this huge huge procession that goes from Halifax Hospital to the ME's office they escorted his body to the ME's office eventually officer Rayner's vehicle is actually placed into a museum so what happened to Ortho Wallace well he flees he is gone. So when they come upon the scene with Officer Rayner there on the ground, shot in the head, they have no idea what happened here. So what they have to do was, the first thing they tried to do was access Officer Rayner's body cam. And the way you can access this is the officers can access the body cam through a program on their cell phone. So a lot of times when they're doing a police report, they can pull up their cell phone and look at the body cam footage of what just occurred so they can describe what happened in their reports. So they tried to access Officer Rayner's cell phone to look at the body cam footage to see what happened. And they can't, the, the cell phone's locked, they can't get in it. So the sergeant orders that this cell phone, or that the body cam footage, the body camera, be taken to the precinct. The precinct, at the precinct, and this is what the guys do at the end of their shift every night. They go to the precinct, they take off their body cam, they put it on this, um, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, they put it into like a charger. Once that body cam footage is in that charger. It uploads the footage to a an internet site called, I wrote it down here, evidence.com. So they can go back later on and look at the footage. So they take his camera over to the precinct, put it into the charger. They go to evidence.com. They pull up the footage and this, the footage that you just saw is what they saw. So now they have a, a, a good picture of this guy. They know that the vehicle that he's driving. Yeah. <sighs> My goodness. So then they start to go after him. So they chase, he, he flees to Jacksonville, changes vehicles, then drives down to, where did he go from Jacksonville to Gainesville? goes to Gainesville, picks up his brother, and then he goes up to Georgia, where a few days later he is apprehended on the grounds. He's hiding in a treehouse. When they actually do apprehend him, he they find on him several weapons, including a Glock 17, which was the weapon used to assault Officer Rayner. So they take him into custody at this at this property the property as it turns out belongs to this black nationalist group called nfa and that stands for not effing around <laughs> okay yeah it's a black militia group they go after kkk things like that and weird so this is where he is they take him into custody and he's charged with attempted murder that charge after Officer Rayner passes away 55 days later, is upgraded to first degree murder. Now he's being tried for that murder, but not in Daytona Beach. They, they moved to have a change of venue because of this, the notoriety of this particular event. I mean, it was all over the news. They were trying to find him. They had a GoFundMe set up for Officer Rayner. To help pay his medical bills that had over 5,000 people donate to the GoFundMe page. They raised over 300, close to $400,000. So this all was argued to a judge that there's no way they're going to find a fair and impartial jury in Daytona Beach. So the judge agreed and it was moved to Orlando. So this is taking place in Orlando as we speak. Now, I listened to the girlfriend of this guy whose residence that was her apartment building there she said uh you know what's your relationship with ortho wallace he's my 
children's father. My baby's daddy. He's the baby daddy. All right, don't get me started. Anyway, does he live with you? No, he doesn't. Does he reside with you? No, he doesn't. Under any kind of definition of the word, she was going to say, no, he doesn't, because she's been coached. This is a very, very contentious point in this case where he lived because the defense wants to argue that he was residing with her at this location and that this i hate this law it's called stand your ground so if you're in a place like your own home and someone comes into it and and tries to go after you you have a right to defend yourself and so the question becomes does that include deadly force? And then it's even extended to, does it include deadly force against an officer who's doing something in the line of duty? And what the judge in this case said is, uh-uh, no, not going to fly. First of all, we don't know whether he really lived there or not. What this woman kept saying is, no, he just visited frequently. So apparently that day, they both work at McDonald's mom you know baby mama baby daddy they both work at mcdonald's she's the manager they work the morning shift so that morning uh they're both working I, i'm guessing he's not the manager so <laughs> he must be one of her subordinates so they're both working that morning at the mcdonald's they had to open you know they were the opening shift so they have to go in and make the biscuits and the hash browns and whatever else you can get from mcdonald's in the morning sausage biscuit that's the best anyway <laughs> i digress so she gets off he gets off she says i gotta uh I, she was going to take her daughter to gymnastics he was going to go to his other daughter's house some other baby mama uh he's gonna go over there and help her bake a cake or something it's a sunday afternoon so she takes her daughter to gymnastics she gets home about 6 37 o'clock he's not home He's still helping bake the cake with his other daughter. And uh, so she does her thing, makes dinner for her. She's got two kids from him. So she makes dinner for the kids and puts in the bed and showers and all that stuff. So they're in bed. And later on that night, she hears some screaming. Somebody's screaming, get me a towel, get me a towel. You know, and she doesn't know what it is. She looks out the window. She doesn't know what's going on. She goes back to bed. <laughs> but. The person that was screaming, get me a towel, was the first officer that found Officer Rayner. It was a fellow female officer. And apparently, and this is kind of graphic, his eye was hanging out. And she, yeah. <sighs> chilling. Just chilling. What this guy went through. So that's his defense. Standing my ground. You know, <sighs> First of all, I watched that video several times. I did not see. It was very, very dark that night. He, uh, I didn't see that he had a gun. I didn't see a weapon. One of the prosecution's argument is that Officer Rayner never drew his weapon. Uh, he didn't. Apparently now when you draw your weapon, there's a, it notifies, there's some kind of, there's so much sophistication going on right here on police officers now. So if they draw their weapon, it notifies somebody that they've drawn their weapon. I did not know that. But if they're drawing their taser, no such notification. It only gives a notification if it fires. But so there's some question about, well, was he going for his taser? I mean, all this guy had to do was listen and do what the police officer told him sit down and you know sit down in the car you know why are you standing why are, you know he's clearly not cooperating with this officer all the officer wanted to do was probably check his driver's license check the vehicle okay it's not the one we're looking for have a nice day sir you know and move on but i'm sorry i think yeah, i was married to an officer for many many years 18 years we were married um and this kind of stuff just burns me you know put your guns in the safe where they belong you don't need to be carrying them around and then there's this whole question about whether this ortho was ortho was smoking marijuana or not 
you know, it doesn't really have any relevancy here because these officers, they, the sergeant testified that, you know, we run into people who every day, every day. He also said that this was a very violent neighborhood, you know, full of criminal activity, very high crime neighborhood that, that we're talking about here. So he's apprehended, he's brought back, and he is now facing the death penalty for the alleged shooting and murder of Officer Rayner. May he rest in peace. But here's something else that also probably, I don't know if it's relevant or not, but it's kind of lends itself to describing the state of mind of this defendant he posted on social media before these murders and i don't know how long before these murders that he was going to get me some pig's blood and then afterwards he posted again that bragging that he had done what he was said he was going to do i mean how sick is that this must be social media week yesterday was a youtuber today it's a guy who wants to post about you know shooting police yeah put your guns away we mean you no harm baby daddy yes so i mean uh, i don't know what i don't know what this guy was up to why he thought he needed to flee if he was defending his standing his own ground then you should be meeting the police officers there and here's my gun here's what he did to me no he's gone goes to georgia i mean come on that if that doesn't speak towards your guilt nothing does turns out this was not the vehicle that they were looking for no it wasn't all right guys uh so that is that so tonight is craft looking wednesday six no i changed it to seven seven p.m central time I still can't get used to that. I mean, for years it was 6 o'clock. Now it's 7 p.m. Central. I think tonight I'm either going to be cross-stitching or crocheting. I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm on the tail end of this diamond painting. Like, I've got three more sections to go. Three and a half more sections. So it all depends on what I feel like working on. So t I started this the other day. And I want to show you because I'm probably going to auction this off one Sunday. I made this little cowl. It goes perfectly with this shirt, doesn't it? Oh my god. It's so beautiful. It's this self-striping floral yarn from Premier called Bloom. Anyway, but I had enough left over that I said, oh, let me make a bucket hat. Then I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so I am waiting for another skein of yarn to come in so that I can finish the bottom part of the bucket hat that will go with this set. So yeah, not done yet. And um, this took me less than a day, but this will be auctioned off and I may make some more of them because they're pretty cool. So I did start another one. I found, I was going through my stash seeing if I had another skein of that. I don't know why I would just buy one skein. And I'll bet you when I get the other one in the mail, I'll find the one skein that I probably thought I bought, but did, anyway, I can't find it. So I found this yarn as I was going through my stash. It has this, it's, it, it, it is, it is exactly what you're seeing. This bright fluorescent pink with this gorgeous halo on it. It's beautiful. It's actually Vanna White yarn. Vanna White. Thank you. So I'm doing the same thing, making another bucket. I love bucket hats. So I am started the top part of this. But crocheting with that halo is not the easiest sometimes because it wants to tangle on you. But it's, oh my God, it feels so soft. Anyway, so I'm torn. Do I work on that or do I do some more cross stitch? I, don't, I haven't really dove into the cross stitch since I had the, uh, what I'm calling my cross stitch car accident <laughs> after I went to the, you know, sale going out of business sale for the my local cross stitch store and got into a car accident yeah wasn't my fault that's not my fault but i have been put on house arrest because of it yes all i'm just 
just come slap an ankle monitor on me because I ain't going nowhere. Maybe once I get the tire pump and the lock and the helmet for my bicycle. Um, I've got two bicycles. My sister doesn't know that. She saw the bicycle. And she's like, where'd this come from? I said, stop going out in the shed. I have another one out there. But <laughs> if I ever get her on it, I'm going to take a picture right before she hits the ground. Because she can ride no bicycle. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe she will if she wants to. This one's really cute. It's got a little basket on it. It's like a little Pee Wee Herman bike. Well, it's big. It's, you know, a big person. But it looks like a Pee Wee Herman bike. You know, it's got my little basket on the front, a little suitcase thing on the rear tire. It's super cute. Okay, I've yammered on long enough, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add some footage to this from the police officer, and then I will get this up posted for you. Have a great day. Hope to see you tonight and craft with me Wednesday. If not, I'll see you tomorrow in Crafting and Crime Daily, where we're going to start that new trial. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.